Ladies and gentlemen, Octagon MMA brings you Tip Sport Game Changer. Nielsen has faced. Let's go. One of the most favorite Octagon fighters, Christian Jungwirth, will fight in Munich, Germany. Christian was already on a winning streak with three victories in a row, but then he narrowly lost to Mate Curtis. He always puts his opponents under lots of pressure. He won't let them rest, he won't let them breathe, he won't let them think. He's a very entertaining fighter, and that's what we expect from his next fight against Christian Eckelin's nemesis, Oliveira, or Traitor, if you will. This Brazilian has scored 16 victories so far. He is still just 27 years old, and he has shown us his punching power, whether he is in training or in the off-season. It will probably be a difficult cut for him to make 77 kilograms. He's always struggled with weight cutting so far. The fighting style of Jungwirth is quite different from Eklund's as well, and therefore we can expect mostly a stand-up bout between these two. Jungwirth is the only fighter of all participants of the Tip Sport Game Changer who will have a fight in 2023 before the Game Changer even begins. It will happen just a month before the event in Ostrava, but Christian Jungwirth just doesn't want to miss the first tournament in Munich and wants to put on a thrilling show. Main event time is upon us, Octagon 39, here in Munich. This, the battle between the Brazilian warrior, Denilson de Oliveira, taking on the Celt, Christian Jungwirth. Now, Luke, when you look at this man's skill set, and when you look at the damage and the destruction that he was able to put onto Christian Eklund in their first fight, it's a dangerous fight for Jungwirth, right? This guy seriously has a good skill set. Dangerous on the feet, and somebody that will step into the fire that Christian Jungwirth will look to light. Especially, you know, being very used to being the outside man here in Germany, fighting Christian Eklin twice, both times trying to spoil the party and did so once as well. So he's used to being in this in this underdog position and coming in here, you know, in enemy territory. Extremely dangerous and holds a lot of power in his hands. And like you said, just damage can cause a lot of damage. And with the game changer just around the corner, you know, the young worth will definitely have that on his mind, even though he's just coming in here, you know, and focusing on tonight three, four weeks away is the next game changer. This guy as well, the outside story of this fight, missed weight quite considerably, just over three kilos, 40% of his purse has gone to Christian Jungwirth. But that will be a huge size advantage. He did have to weigh in at 86, 86 kilograms maximum at four o'clock this afternoon. He did that and this fight is now on, but that's the story outside the fight, right? Yes, yeah, so that means he would have made two weight cuts, basically, because to, if he missed the weight and then had to stay at that weight, it's, it can be very, very bad for your, you know, for your cardio, especially, and your mindset too. If you're going to have to worry about what you're eating, what you're drinking, um, you know, normally you have a big sigh of relief after those weigh-ins, and you get to enjoy yourself until fight night. He has not been able to do that, but seems very calm and happy as he sings away to his entrance music. And this again, somebody who has his eyes on the tip sport game changer. He believes if he finishes Christian Jungworth, then that means he should take his place because if he beats the guy that's in the tip sport, he feels that he will deserve to fight Tato Primera, who is also sat just behind us instead of Jungworth. Another example of just how that 1 million euros is inspiring the fighters in and around the welterweight class. The Nielsen, the Oliveira inside the cage. One half of our main event is here. Now let's welcome the Celt, Christian Jungwirth. Listen to that. This man has earned every single one of those cheers. This man has carved his own place in the Octagon fans' hearts. And he's done it, Luke through blood, through sweat, through tears, and through the fights he puts on in the Octagon cage. We asked the question at Octagon 33, how would Germany respond to Christian Jungwirth? He beat Trushek in a bloodbath. 
Then he came up against Kurtesh. He lost a split decision, which Germany felt should have gone his way. And now, now he receives this hero's welcome. None deserve it more than Christian Jungworth. Jungworth putting on a phenomenal year in 2022 and really stamping himself as one of the Oscar favorites. And we see that here with his first ever main event. I think you put it perfectly, he deserves every cheer and every clap that he's receiving because he's earned it through blood, sweat and tears in the last year. And the reception that he's getting is fantastic to see. Everyone on their feet at cage side. And look, in less than a month's time, he is set to fight for his share of that 1 million euros. And David Cosmo, one of her potential opponents in that tip spot game changer, said this is a huge risk for Youngworth. Why would you take a risk like that when the reward Because like he that? doesn't care. Exactly. He doesn't he care. He does wants not. to fight. That's what I like to say. That's why he's won the hearts of the Oscar fans and the people here in Germany. Because he doesn't do it for that. He does it for the respect and love of people and the performance. And, you know, as he enters the cage here, the energy in the room is electric. A real main event welcome. We, yeah, exactly that. We asked the question, how would they, Germany respond? How would Munich respond? They have answered by getting on their feet, cheering and roaring. Their man, the Celt, Christian Jungworth. We look at the tail of the tape. Seven years, eight years the younger is Danielson de Oliveira. Height and reach on the side of Christian Jungworth, as are the tip sport odds and every man woman, child, person, spirit in this arena, the Audi Dome, as they stand and they greet the Celt, Christian Jungworth. This fight, our main event of the evening, scheduled for three five-minute rounds. It's time to get it underway. We need one man, the man with the mic. Let's pass it to him now, Andre Novotny. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last fight of the evening. And this fight we brought you in association with Tip Sport. Our judges skate side are Clement Werner, Wojciech Nowak and Václav Přibyl. And the referee in the cage of the action is Jan Voborník. And now, this is the main event of the evening. We've been all waiting for, and that's why we all together, Jedeme! Bombi! This is the main event, welterweight bow, scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Let me introduce you both fighters. And we start in the blue corner. He is 27 years old, stands 179 centimeter tall, weighing at 80.3 kilo. Represent RD champions. And the coach in his corner is Michael Degashek. He has a professional record of 26 fights, 17 wins, 11 KO and 9 losses. Fighting out of Brazil, Danielson Trator de Oliveira. In the red corner. He's 35 years old, stands 181 centimeter tall, weighed in at 77.4 kilo. Represent Kong Jim Stuttgart, Dimas Jim, Boxer Norlinden, and the coaches in his corner are Oliver Meyer, Dima Ambuzabian, and Daniel Adler. His professional record is 18 fights, 12 wins, 6 KO, and 6 losses. Fighting. For Germany, Christian De Kelt Guys, you know this game. Whatever happened, keep it clear. Go hard, but always fair. If you want to touch gloves, do that and go back to your corner. Best of luck for both of you. This is the main event of the evening. What a reception for Christian the Celt Jungworth. His first main event for Octagon. And he takes on the dangerous Brazilian. 
De Nielsen, the Oliveira. The Oliveira in the blue corner, white trunks taking on the Celt. Youngworth in the red corner, black trunks. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Luke Barnett. What an atmosphere, Luke. What an atmosphere. Yeah, and Youngworth normally comes forward storming, high energy, lots of long combinations. And lands very well, but when you think he's finished, he continues going, but needs to be careful against the power of Oliveira. Yeah, the Oliveira certainly has the striking power. You look at that, 11 KOs on his record from 16 professional wins. And he showed that power against Christian Eklund in that first fight, Octagon 33. And it's not just the headshots, Luke, it's the body shots as well. He really, really has that power. And once he connects with you, whether it's head or body, can change the fight, change the game. And you can see the caution from Jungworth, not used to seeing him so cautious, more, normally a bit more reckless coming forward. And we've seen him use pressure as a weapon as well, Luke, that Pukac fight, which we keep going back and talking about, breaking oh. the likes of Robert Pukac, getting him to quit between rounds. Needs to be careful there as he, he steps in, hands low and a swing and a miss from the Oliveira. Stepping, working his way around. Oh, a snapping kick from the Oliveira. And we saw a glimpse of the life of the Oliveira over there in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. A very basic, humble life. And again, he credits Octagon for all they've done for him. And yeah. also the opportunities they've given him. And I feel like even though he missed weight, he feels like he's gleaned up quite a lot uh, coming into this fight compared to seeing him against Eklund as he dives forward. Big shots landing. It seems to be imposing his will here against Youngworth. An uncharacteristic start from Youngworth. Uh, circling out on the back foot. It's very rare you see him outstriked in the opening two minutes. Yeah, much more used to seeing him come forward with long combinations and landing. And like you said, utilizing that pressure. Very cautious early on here. And, and it's not working in his favor as De Libiero is, is, is growing in confidence. Yeah, settling nicely, looking absolutely loose and dialed in is De Oliveira. Oy. Wild swing and a oh, miss, nice but sharp, sharp, sharp one two there. Certainly feel like De Oliveira didn't read the script for this fight, and that's what makes it so dangerous. Because De Oliveira, despite that loss to Christian Jungwirth in his last fight, it's a very different stylistic matchup. Sorry, against Eklund. Eklund brought the grappling, imposed it, finally wore him down because it was over five rounds as well, and got the finish. But Jungwirth. A very different puzzle indeed. And it's rare you see Jungworth going for the takedowns. Yes, he looks, uses the cage for control and grappling as he did in the catch fight, but loves to stand and bang. Yeah, it just looks like he's almost questioning himself in there, does Christian. Very different. And getting punished every time he makes a mistake. Now you see him look for the takedown and he gets it. And listen to the roar from the crowd here, once again on their feet. Gives up the back. Does De Oliveira, but he gets uses it to get back to his feet. That knee on the outside from Christian. Interesting idea here, and manages to try and get that leg reap. Good balance though, as he gets back to his feet. One minute, 25 seconds left in this one. This first round, scheduled for three five-minute rounds. And again, this is a position that Jungworth used really well against Pukac. I keep jumping back to that because it was so effective. Yeah, we're more used to seeing this from Jungworth. This is the position he likes, grinding him out. Then he breaks away and throws shots, comes back in, has that forward pressure. Not used to seeing him look for takedowns as he goes for that leg reap again on the outside. But maybe it's the Southport Orthodox thing that's throwing him up as well. The Libya are very dangerous and powerful on the feet. But maybe now he's come to terms with it as he looks at this leg reap again. And again, the amazing story of Christian Jungworth. He only came to the sport, I believe, at 28 years of age. He started boxing 30 years of age. He started MMA, and he had his first fight with zero MMA training. <laughs> he went to an event, they asked him to fight, he did, and he won that. And then now he's fully dedicated himself to this sport. Realized it can change him and his family's life. That's the motivation, his wife, his daughter. Again, shooting in. Christian does not want any other striking game of Deliviera. Now he's, he's found comfort in this position, those double underhooks. Little shots, this is what used to, more pressure. 
Okay. But it might be too little too late in this first round. It's been a very interesting exchange. There was such a, ten a tentative opening three minutes between the two. But when you see those positions and the control Youngworth is able to have against the cage, that's got to be what the corner will be looking for more of in rounds two and three, right? Definitely, but I just feel it took him so long to do it in that first round. He might have thrown it away. I mean, I, I feel like that first round probably went to the Liviera for just for more, you know, landing more shots. So he needs to wake up. And if that's that's the game plan to keep him pressured up against the cage, we need to see it a lot earlier in this second round. And um, flip you into the next corner. Uh, Danielson, what does he need to do to, to make sure that does not happen? I mean, he's doing everything right. He just needs to to work off the back foot a little bit more. As he comes forward, he's great. And then maybe just step out. Beautiful. See so shots landing off straight through the middle, but then he stumbles a little bit and balances a bit off. Needs to avoid this fence and circle away from it when he's looking to be taken down. Eckler, um, I keep saying Eckler now. Yeah, because of the behind us. That's the yeah. problem. We're going to have to get him moved. Can exactly. we get security over here? <laughs> You're going to need it. You're going to need it. But yeah, you're worth you know, he's looking for those double underhooks, so he needs to avoid opening up the, the, the elbows and leaving space for those to come in. Round number two set to get underway. Still the favourite, Youngworth, but the odds have slightly shifted, slightly less unbalanced. But now we go into round two. Youngworth, red corner, Danielson de Oliveira in the blue. And maybe we'll see a little bit more urgency earlier on from Youngworth. Maybe it was the nerves, maybe it's the main event, maybe it's, you know, the crowd, Germany, everything. Uh, maybe took him a while to adjust to that. Or well, it could just be the power possessed by De Oliveira. Oh, snapping in that low kick. And you can see De Oliveira is trying to counter that as soon as it comes through. Ooh, nice idea going high with the outside kick. Maybe set it up with the jab or a left hook. And the crowd once again raising their voice. Cheering on Jungworth the Celt. A very uncharacteristic performance so far, but finding a bit more comfort in this second round. The other question I've got to ask Luke, and again, we can only ask it to you subjectively, that tip sport game, do you think that's playing into his mind at all? Because has to, has to. Yep. You know, it's such a big opportunity, a moment. Maybe trying to avoid the damage, doesn't want to get into a slugfest and looking for these takedowns. It's a very different style for him. So he's a bit more patient, waiting for the right opportunity. But by waiting, it just isn't him. It isn't your work. He's, he's a forward, you know, front foot fighter. fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've so seen him drown opponents. I feel like it's either that or it's the Southpaw Orthodox matchup that maybe is confusing him a little bit. I'm trying to think if he fought a Southpaw. Was Pukac a Southpaw? No, Pukac is uh, Orthodox. So that might be it as well. Oh, a nice little dig to the stern and there. The midsection, sorry, the bread basket from uh, Danielson. What are the differences? Obviously, the power hands, the power shots are, are the most effective for both sides. But when you are going jab to jab and you're standing with your lead foot towards the lead foot, what, what, what does that change? It changes so much, the angles and everything, but it's more just confidence. Sometimes you're, because obviously a Southpaw fighter is used to fighting Southpaw and fighting against Orthodox is because I'd say 80% of people are Orthodox. But for the Orthodox guy, how often do you, you, you fight a Southpaw? They're sparring okay, but fighting one, it can just change the distance of that backhand. Great reversal there from De Oliveira. Yeah, De Oliveira. And your work does. Entry, turned it. And does yeah. well to reverse it once again. And he looks so strong in this spot, right? He really does. We've seen it before. He works well from here. Yeah, especially against the heavier man who missed weight by three kilos. We need to remember that. That definitely comes into these exchanges. Yeah, and the fact that like you said he was almost forced to do two weight cuts because the, the deal was he cannot be over 86 kilograms by 4 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, swing and a miss there from the Oliveira. Well, Youngworth is dipping his head on those entries a lot. And that opens up that uppercut, that rear, and even the knee, right? Exactly that. I'd just like to see Youngworth land a shot on the feet, be a bit more aggressive and then maybe look for the takedown, but you need to get respect at the moment from Oliveira because he hasn't caused much damage at all. See, now when they go orthodox, orthodox, let's see if there's a change. 
in the confidence. Well, that jab gets through. There's the first sign. Oh, swinging the overhand right from De Oliveira. Switches back, does the Leo Vera. He has that wild look in his eyes, always De Oliveira. And it matches that homeless looking beard as well. <laughs> Youngworth pressing forward, just one minute left in this second round. Oh. Wee, nice right hand, that's the first solid shot that he's landed. Growing now in confidence. Stalking his man, his Youngworth as the crowd oh, wow. cheer. Beautiful reversal, and now Wizard gets to the front headlock. Strong, strong response from Youngworth. De Oliveira went for that. Oh, he's going for the standing guillotine, maybe. They're yeah, deep in on it, but needs to be careful with this outside reap. Oh, now does the scramble. Does well there, does De Oliveira to, to attempt that takedown. Reverse, though, from Youngworth. Gets him up against the fence. Good head position. This is more like it. This is more like we're used to seeing. Yeah, that frantic pace. The frantic, scrambles. high, yes, scrambling yeah. pace. I feel like he's got my, as soon as he landed that right hand, I, I felt the change in his energy. Responded well, because that was the first time we've seen De Oliveira in all of his fights in Octagon go for that takedown. That says a lot as well. The wizard response from Youngworth was excellent. It was an extremely sharp, stiff right hand that landed, so it definitely affected. You can see the blood as well now coming from the nose. Looks a bit tired as well, taking deep breaths, walking back to the wrong corner. Maybe, maybe now we'll see uh, the weight cut take effect in this third round. Well, we are about to step into that third and final round. The third and final round of Octagon 39. We have seen the coming out party for Alexander Popek. We have seen the arrival in the featherweight division of Lozen Keita. And now we are seeing potentially, through the response of this crowd, the stock of Jungworth rising as well. But still dangerous is the Nielsen de Oliveira, right? Still dangerous. And now you can see that finish line. Now you know there's just five minutes left. You can leave it all in there. Yeah, he needs to. Uh, you know, I feel like he probably did the best of the first round. I'd say Youngworth the second. So everything to play for in this third and final. But you never know how the judges could have this scored. And he possesses that knockout power. I don't know why he's looking for takedowns. Uh, again, maybe that's a little sign of fatigue. Oh, where that stiff right hand really did affect and connect. And it was beautiful from defense from, from Youngworth as well. So Octagon 39 is going to draw to a close with this third and final round here in our main event. Off we go. All to play for over the next five minutes. And it really is. You never know what the judges see or what they will score. And it was such a tentative start from Youngworth in that first round. Like you said, that might have run away from him. The second round, arguably a much more decisive round for Youngworth. So if we're one and one on our imaginary scorecards, it really is all to play for, Luke. Yeah, it comes out a lot more active. Does Youngworth. Looks like he's found his flow state. Very, very relaxed now. If he can land another right hand and, and really stamp his authority and earn the respect of Delivera because he just has such power in those hands. Oh, that's the right hand. That's a solid one. Yeah, he's found it. He's found the home for it. And even more confident throwing that low kick now as well. A bit more snappy, a bit more power. Maybe he would see that right head kick come back. There it is. Almost like I'm playing a computer game. Danielson trying to close the range a little. He's struggling now to step inside. Yeah, I feel like cardio playing a, playing a factor here now for Deliviera. You could see him in between round two and three, taking deeper breaths. Now he's waiting for his moments a little bit more. And those three kilograms that he missed by, that might be the difference as far as gas tank now. Oh, again, such pop on Youngworth. Yeah, Youngworth needs to be a bit more active, though. He's still letting this run away. He needs to impose himself and come forward and stalk the Libiera because that's when he's most effective. And he looked great in the second round doing so. Now he's kind of dancing around and, I don't know, showing his footwork, but it's not really effective so far. And now entering the third, uh, entering three minutes left on the fight. Two minutes down in this third and final round. Oh, we've got to be careful with that. Those fingers outstretched as well from Youngworth. 
Oof. Goes to the body well, does do De Oliveira again. And despite us talking about the fatigue of De Oliveira. Oh, the left hand! Lad! Oh! And sits him down. A flash knockdown there. For we De said about the power. But inspires Youngworth now, but he's got a lot to make up for because on the judges' scorecard, that will score heavily. Yep. A flash knockdown or not, an effective strike it certainly was, Luke, and it put Youngworth down to the mat. Two minutes, 20 seconds now. This is tight. This is a tight fight. Oh, and again, that left hook comes swinging, just let grazes past the nose of Youngworth. Gets hustled around, but nice judo attempt. Gives him the dominant position. He's the double underhooks now. Yeah. Gets the underhook back, pummels in. Good work. Hustling back and forth, but escapes. Does do the Oliveira. It should the cheers of Youngworth. Oi. Nice little left there from him with a slip rather than a effect of the strike from the Oliveira. Still the biggest moment for me was that left hand that dropped. It's the, it's the most eye-catching moment of the entire fight, to be absolutely honest, right? Yeah. And with a minute and 20 seconds left in this third and final round, Youngworth has to do something. Has to make something happen as he comes charging forward. Oh, that was... The Nielsen looked to be wobbled a little bit then. One minute, one minute, five seconds left. Oh. Clock. Oh, he misses. Again. And a nice left hand from Oliveira. So many questions to be asked about this fight about what we are witnessing in front of us here in the main event of Octagon 39. A strange evolution of Youngworth in this fight, a completely different man than what we're used to seeing. And it has to be. Oh, a nice kick to the body there, solid across the midsection from Youngworth with that rear kick. This is more like it. This is what we used to see in these feints. Forward pressure coming in with the 18 seconds, though. Needs, needs something definitive to stamp this round. Nice shoulder shrug. Yeah, he's trying to work, he's trying to hustle here, but the clock is running away. Right, there we go. Three rounds in the books. Youngworth raises his hand, De Nielsen, the Oliveira feels he's done enough, he beats his chest. I don't know. I but really it, don't it, know. I really don't know. This is a... Crazy night of fights already. This main event uncharacteristic as far as the start of the fight from Youngworth. For me, it comes down to the third, the, the, in, in our imaginary score. No, 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 it comes down to the first round. Second round, I, I, I go Youngworth. Third round, I go Oliveira because of landing that, you know, the, 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 the biggest shot of the yeah. fight, that left hand. It was only temporary. We'll see it in the highlights here, I'm sure. Um, there we see it as it drops him. The most eye-catching moment. Youngworth maybe controlled the rest of the fight, but it doesn't matter. So the first round, which I think it was a little bit slow for Youngworth of a start, going to be interesting for this one. Was not the fight we expected. Certainly wasn't. But this will be decided by the judges here. Cage side at Octagon 39. Fascinating stuff. That is the end of the fight, and you can see there, you'll see Youngworth raise his hands. There's the, uh, the significant punches. The, the takedowns, they're giving one to Youngworth there. 73 to 31 as far as significant punches. 107 against 53. All punches. <laughs> when, you, when you see those stats, you feel like Youngworth might have done enough, but that one significant strike from De, De Oliveira was the most significant of the fight, and it maybe changes the view. So interesting. We shall wait. We shall see the scorecards being collated now. Will this arena roar once more for Youngworth? Will De Oliveira, after three fights, claim victory? Here in the octagon cage, nobody really celebrating. They know it's close, Luke. They know it's tight, they know it's close.
but only one man knows the answer. The man with the mic, so let's give it to him now, Andre Novotny. Fighters in the middle. After three rounds, let's see how the judges score this fight. First judge, 29, 28, Jungwirth. Second judge, 29, 28, Oliveira. Third judge, 29, 28, by split decision. After three rounds, the winners coming from the red corner, Christian Dukeld. Jungwirth! Christian, herzlichen Glückwunsch erstmal zu deinem Sieg. Die Bühne geht nach dir. Was hast du für Worte heute? Servus München, Stuttgart, Bopfingen. Servus. Das ist einfach der Wahnsinn. Ein kleiner Junge aus Bopfingen von 5000 Einwohnern steht hier vor dem verkauften, ausverkauften Haus. Dankeschön für den ganzen Support. Es war ein Arbeitssieg heute. Das wussten wir, was auf uns zukommt. Es war ein harter Gegner. Respekt an ihn, dass er von Brasilien herkommt. Hut ab, Respekt. Und wünsche ihm alles Gute in Zukunft. Und ja, euch noch einen schönen Hauseweg. Feiert schön und ja, in drei Wochen geht es für mich wieder weiter. Deswegen Feuer frei. Auf geht's! He was just welcoming everybody and saying that he's super happy. He's coming from a small village, uh, was a small guy, and now he's fighting here in front of a full arena. That's what he's super happy for. Uh, he had a very tough opponent. It was much tougher than expected. But at the, at the end of the day, he's just happy that he won. Also, Christian. Für dich geht es jetzt weiter beim Tippsport Game Changer. Wie siehst du dich dieses Jahr? Was hast du hier auf dem Plan? Game Changer abräumen oder wie ist die Lage? Ja, so wie du mich kennst natürlich. Was anderes <lacht> habe ich nicht vor. <lacht> ja, definitiv. Ich lebe für den Sport wie kein anderer. Ich trainiere jeden Tag seit Jahren, zweimal täglich. Und das ist der Erfolg. Von nichts kommt nichts. Ganz einfach. Punkt fertig aus. So. What's next for him is he is so determined to win the next Tipsport Game Changer. He's training every day, twice a day for years, and this is the hard work that is paying off right now. Christian, vielen Dank. Noch vielen Dank an meine ganzen Sponsoren. Danke, dass ihr mich unterstützt. Ohne euch wäre das auch nicht möglich. Vielen, vielen Dank. Meine Damen und Herren, Christian, der Geld, Jungwirt! Hi Christian, congratulations for your fight. You look in good performance and see you in three weeks, my brother. See you in three weeks. Yes. Ja. Also, Christian Jung wird und sein Gegner für den Tipsport Game Show in gerade einmal drei Wochen steigt dieser Hühne wieder in den Käfig und dann wird das erste Match aus der Tipsport Game Changer Pyramide ausgetragen. Shake hands, fair play. Schönen Abend euch. Vielen Dank, Christian Jungwirth. There we see. Tata Ladies Primera. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for now. That was Octagon 39 from Munich for the very first time. We sold out this Audi Arena. Thank you very much. It means the world to us. And see you next time in Ostrava on Octagon 40. And next time in Germany in June. In Oberhausen will be Christian Jungwirth for sure, and also Christian Eckerlin, and a lot of German fighters. Thank you very much. Jacob and Mots. See you next time. So there we have it. Octagon 39 in the books, finished by Christian Jungwirth. von einem ausverkauften Audi Dome hier in München. Wir sehen uns demnächst bei Octagon 40 in Prag oder am 17.06. in Oberhausen, wo auch hoffentlich Christian Eckerli und Christian Jungwirt wieder im Geld zu sehen sein werden. Bis dann, wir wünschen euch einen schönen Abend. Ciao. So there we have it. That is Octagon 39, finished by Christian Jungwirth taking the victory there, then facing off with his next adversary. That will be Tato Primera, March 
the fourth in Ostrovar Octagon 30. Thank you for joining us. Stick with us. We will be back, as I said, March the 4th. The Tip Sport Game Changer begins. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, Octagon MMA brings you Tip Sport Game Changer.